there is a fine subjective line between good art and mediocrity. And it's my job to point out the difference. And there's an art to doing just that. Finding the right art to go with the right environment and the right investor is where I come in. It's less dangerous. Here we are now. Entertain us. Cause I feel stupid. You're contagious. Here we are now. Entertain us. Yeah. As a registered investment and art advisor, I find art that not only you're going to enjoy every day, but art that's going to appreciate over time along with the rest of your portfolio. And for that, you have to have more than a casual observer's eye. You have to know your clients and you have to know the art world. And you have to be able to put them together and hopefully create magic for generations to come. And for the first time, you can see how that's all done in the art of the dealer. From LA, New York, Paris, to Rome and Amsterdam, I make literally a thousand studio visits to find the next great artist, the next Jean-Michel Basquette, the next Pollock, um, the next John Mitchell, and then I have to match their work to the right investor. I hear you have some incredible art. I hear you have some incredible walls that you need to put art on. I'm a collector. I collect a lot of different things. I dealt in art in New York City and in Miami uh, during Art Basel. And I've been an investment advisor for the past 20 years. And the firm I'm at now, we're life planners. And part of that portfolio, that life portfolio, is, is going to be art for us. So what I do is I go find the next hot artist. I go find the next emerging artist. Or if you like an established artist already, I go find their artwork with the private dealers in New York City or at the auction houses. I go to the auction house for you and I bid for you. And I want to see how far I can push you. Some of the best art that appreciates now are very avant-garde. Uh, like a, there was a young man who died of AIDS when he was 30 years old. He's a gay prostitute named Morris Rowe. And his Polaroid photographs that are now coming to the surface almost 20 years after he died, but he is the next hot thing. So I don't know how comfortable you are with male prostitutes in their underwear in a hotel room, Polaroid photographs. That's what I mean is I want to know how far I can push you. That's not going to work for my art world. Every day, investors, art collectors, and millionaires reach out to me for advice on where to put their money in the art market. Everyone is trying to find the next big star and the next great investment. Being an investment advisor and trader and a painter for the past 20 years really helps me to hone in on that one great artist whose work is exceptional and I can see that they've tapped into something special and that they're going to break it wide open. Oh my God, what a wonderful place. Thank you. Is this yours? Yes. Oh, I love it. When did you do this? Actually, this is the most recent one. I Latest had this series? canvas and all of a sudden I was, you know, I had this emotion coming. I love your work. I have to tell you from the first minute that I went on your website, I love the combination that you do contemporary and figurative and mm -hmm. obviously being a dog owner myself. And, seeing your figurative work being on animals and from the perspective that you do it mm -hmm. with the with the uh, mono colorful background yes. it's almost for me even though it's figurative it's almost abstract for me mm -hmm. and I, I really appreciate that yeah. i don't I, abstract for me doesn't mean that it has to be yeah, unrecognizable like, i'm an artist and mm -hmm. i like my surrounding mm -hmm. work as well the painting just doesn't stop it just no expands <laughs> your living space has to inspire, inspire. you on a daily yeah. basis yeah Definitely. i feel the same way the color and 
I love it. It's just like a craving. I look at something and the texture, paint, color, and art, and interpret that to my work. Gift. I feel so blessed. Our little group has always been and always will until the end. Hello, hello. So, what is this room? Hello. So, this is my studio. I don't know you want to see this. First, so I have art. I want to look at everything. But I, you know, I like to, I mean, I have my paintings randomly on the wall. Because I, if I have a client, then I have to show. Because I do a lot of uh, commissions as well. So yes, this is a working, uh, it's a working process. Okay. I'm gonna uh, move this, and then I'm gonna show you. This is my um, part of like I. Sometimes I call myself a conceptual artist because it's just it's like where you put that piece of part of form that it will function and then all that about all those elements. It's it kind of like I evolved myself. And this is the one I was telling you. This is the, that's my daughter when she was 11. Everybody does their in interpretation about butterfly and then this is mine. You can almost be a graffiti artist. Almost. Because yeah. you do graffiti, you do spray paint, and that is the main instrument of graffiti work. Yes. Even Keith Haring, when yes. he was, you know, um, starting out, that was his main thing. Mm -hmm. What are the butterflies made of? They are actually made of the same as the linen. This is linen. Oh, it's just linen. I like it very much. It's less dangerous. Here we are now. Entertain us. Because I feel stupid. The art market is so fragmented right now, it's hard to find good and upcoming artists whose work is going to increase exponentially, which I then have to promote, and then match up to the right collector, and then promote again. And so for the first time, you can see it all in The Art of the Dealer.